Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. This is a bonus episode, Innovative Thinker, episode number 449, Innovative Thinker. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black entrepreneur experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Imagine being co-founder and chief operating officer of Allegiant Electric, a comprehensive electric company providing full-service solutions for both commercial and residential needs, specializing in electric vehicle charging, solar, and battery storage. Welcome, Andrea Vigil. Thank you. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you'd like them to know about you and your business? My husband and I own Allegiant Electric, and we're a full-service electrical contracting company um, serving the Southern Nevada community. We established our business in 2015. We're a woman minority uh, business. We do specialize in EV, which is electrical vehicle installations, battery storage, and solar as well. Why electrical? Why electrical vehicles? Why electrical? Tell us your backstory. Sure. So my husband and I moved out here to Las Vegas in 2005. We're originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico. We met in 10th grade in high school in Mr. Dudley's class. And uh, we d- we got married. We decided to move out here to Las Vegas. My husband has been an electrician since 1992. We have a 30-year-old and we have a 31-year-old and an 11-year-old. And basically, my husband was working in the electrical industry. I was working throughout my career in different, I worked for, you know, builders, I worked for developers. And then I started working for American Patriot. It was owned by a neurosurgeon. And basically in 2015, 2016, the net metering rules changed here in Nevada. And so when the rules changed, I had to lay everybody off, including myself and my husband. And at that point, we wanted, you know, we enjoyed running the business, but we decided that we wanted to start our own business. And we started the business out of our house, just my husband and I. We um, had a friend that came and talked to us and he wanted to work with us. So we brought him on board. And then we started getting busier as a lot of the solar companies had shut down. There was now a need for people that didn't have a solar provider to assist them if they had any issues, you know, with their existing system. So that created a niche market for us. And it basically got us to the point where we opened our own office in 2017. And we now have approximately uh, 18 employees and we're continuing to grow. We're doing a, a custom homes. We installed the EV chargers at Allegiant Stadium. We've in- uh, installed uh, EV chargers throughout the valley in Prim. We did some in Mesquite. We've done hundreds within personal properties, and we just are continuing to grow and, and thrive in the industry. When we think about solar, we think about sustainability. As a consumer, what is something we don't know about the solar industry that we should know? I think it's important in the solar industry to make sure that the company that you're hiring is licensed, bonded, and insured. So I think it's important that they go to the Nevada Contractors website to ensure that the company that they are working with does have the license. I think on the solar um, side as well, I think it's important to clean your solar panels at least once a year. When you're purchasing a solar system, I really think that it's important to pay attention to the inverter because the most of the calls that we receive is going to be like troubleshooting with regards to the inverter. And so I really a fan of in phase. I, you know, we've done a lot of work with SMA. We've also done a lot of work with um, Solar Edge as well. So I think making sure you're getting the right inverter is very important. So if someone is listening and they're not in the state of Nevada. They should go to their contractor's board and ensure the person installing the solar panels are licensed through their contractor's board? Absolutely. That's important, especially if you run into issues with regards to leaks in their roof. They need to know that they need to go back to their contractor's board if they're not getting the right communication or if the 
contractors not going and taking care of their needs, it's very important to stay engaged with the contractor's board and make sure that whoever's doing the installation is licensed, bonded, and insured. Andrea, there are so many brands and businesses that are dominating. Talk about a brand or a business that's dominating that you admire and why. I believe, you know, my husband worked for Helix. My project manager worked for Helix. I just really, you know, like their story. I think they're just thriving right now. They're expanding into, um, you know, providing education. I think safety is, you know, very important. So I just, I really look to them. Basically, I follow, you know, what they do, you know, as a, a leader in our industry. I think they're doing amazing when it, when it, you know, comes to continuing to educate their employees and making sure that they have all the proper training that they need. And, you know, that's something that's really important to us as well. We have hired a safety person that does provide all of our safety training. He goes out to our job sites to make sure that our employees are wearing their proper PPE. And then he sends me a report. Then we, you know, we meet with our team to just continue to close those broken windows, you know, in, in our business and just continue to grow and, you know, meet with each other and see how we can correct things that need to be corrected and continue to improve and ensure that we have, you know, the right safety glasses, that they have the right gloves, that they're, they have the proper harnesses, they know how to use them. And, you know, safety is very, very important. Roberto always says 10 fingers, 10 toes. So we like our employees to come into work with 10 fingers, 10 toes and leave work with 10 fingers and 10 toes. I think safety is, you know, crucial to our our organization. You talked about broken windows. There are so many risks, but also rewards in starting a business. Talk about your worst moment in business and what was your takeaway? I think one of, you know, the worst moments would have been, you know, during COVID when there was just so many uncertainties, we were heavy in the residential side. So now we can't go and, you know, do residential work because, you know, the six feet, you can't get into the houses. And I think during that time, our business really pivoted. And I was fortunate enough to have had the opportunity to participate in the Stanford Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Program. And I think this time really gave me the opportunity to work on my business, you know, not just in my business. And really evaluate, you know, what were our strengths, what were our weaknesses, and just basically, you know, we started to pivot. Fortunately, at that time, we were doing a lot of work for Sunrun, and we were doing a lot of panel upgrades. We didn't have to have the communication with the homeowner, and fortunately, you know, for us, Envy Energy, you know, we were able to still continue to do the panel upgrades, and I believe that really just kept us going and kept us getting out of of everything. I actually ended up hiring another 11 people during that time. I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person living or not. They've impacted your business so much. Who is that person? And what are you saying to that person? I have a few people that I could say that have really, you know, helped mentor and and shape our business. Jim Coyne, he's, you know, one of the the people that I worked for while I was working at Rhodes Homes and then at Lake Las Vegas. When my husband and I decided to open our own business, he was gracious enough to take the time to meet with us and to talk about things. And it's a scary time. You don't know, you know, we're both jumping into this business together. He just encouraged us to take the risk and, you know, and and basically have the confidence in ourselves to be able to do this. I think, you know, he's been very influential. I've taken so many different small business classes since I first started my business. And I think, you know, the SBA has been great. The entire team, especially during COVID, you know, when people weren't answering their phones, you didn't know um, what was, you know, is there going to be funding or the PPP loans, what's going to be happening. And when I called my local office, they all answered the phone and, you know, just kept us and guided us during that time. And I think that was crucial. And and then my uh, mentor, Miguel Galarza, during the Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Program, he was great. I mean, just kind of talking me through a lot of different things and 
giving me advice, I think is, you know, invaluable. And then, you know, once I was named small business person of the year for Nevada in 2022, and for the region, I had the opportunity to go to the White House and meet with the vice president. And I also had the opportunity to meet Almi. And Almi has been a great strength. I'm able to, you know, call her if I'm running into an, a challenge here locally in my state. She also recommended me to participate in the Hope by National, which is Hispana's organized for political equality. So with that, I had the opportunity to go back to Washington, D.C., which was great with another group of women. We also went to Mexico City, which was amazing. I had the opportunity to go to the embassy. And from there, I've just, you know, continued to take different classes. I participated in the MGM program. I had a great mentor, you know, with the MGM program as well. That was Mohammed. And I just found out yesterday I'm going to be able to sell my book at one of the events at MGM. So I'm really excited about that opportunity. And I've just stayed engaged in the small business community, you know, just with a lot of, I think we've been a support system, you know, amongst ourselves. And so I think a lot of my small business friends, you know, we've just kind of been a network of, you know, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And just kind of continuing to just stay afloat throughout my business. You talked about your book, Tell the audience, so you co-authored a book? So there's 16 of us, uh, Latinas in Construction. Tina actually had posted on the um, uh, Alban Mobilize, basically looking for women in construction. And so I reached out to her. You know, then I basically just the story together. And then it's just, it's a a group of, of women that have their stories and just talk about their struggles and their triumphs and who's been important to them. You know, my mom has encouraged me throughout my entire life to just, if I'm having a tough day, if I'm trying to collect money, I pick up the phone and call my mom. She's prays for me more than anybody. She's at the church praying, you know, in the days that I'm struggling. And, you know, because owning a small business is not always fun and games. And sometimes I wish I would just be able to go to work and get a check and come back. You know, there's times you don't get paid because you are waiting to get paid. So owning a business is challenging in many, many ways as well. How can they purchase the book? If they give me a call, 702-715-2510, the book is also on Amazon as well. And they can also email me at Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-A dot V-I-G-I-L at AllegianElectric.Vegas. What I would like to do with the portion of the proceeds is put a scholarship together for young girls that are looking to kind of take it to the next level. I'm also partnered with Crystal de Rey, St. Vider, Central Technical Training Academy. So I'm looking to put an event together in October for 100 young girls. And this is going to be part of the program through the uh, Women Enterprising Magazine. And then hopefully we'll be able to get scholarships to take, I'm hoping for 10 girls to the next conference, which will be in Nashville. Someone is listening and they're interested in sponsorship. They would like to sponsor one of the girls or several girls, how would you recommend they connect with you regarding that? I think the easiest would be to call me at the 702-715-2510. That's my cell phone. And I'd be happy to, you know, I'm putting the program together right now and it's going to be really exciting. I can't wait. I have, um, I really am excited and I hope that my Latina women in construction will be here to join me to be mentors. I've already reached out to Elmi to see if she could be a mentor, you know, and I've talked to my Hope by National Sisters as well to see how many of them would be able and willing to come out here, you know, and I've talked to different friends, you know, I have my other friend, Chandra, she's uh, the vice president with IGT. And so I'm just looking to get some really strong women so that, you know, girls have people to look up to and, you know, not be afraid to get in the construction industry, because it is obviously a male dominated industry. But even gaming, you know, for example, like Chandra has gone all the way, she's a vice president. And those are we need some strong women for these young girls to look up to. And from a personal perspective, why is that so important to you? What is that backstory? I think it's important to me for my daughter and for my daughters, you know, Giovanna and for Aaliyah, I have an 11-year-old. And I just, I don't want them to have to deal with all the different 
like barriers that I've had to had to deal with, you know, in the construction industry or whatever industry, you know, they decide to go into. I just, you know, want to make sure that we pave the way and, you know, guide them and just make sure that, you know, she she already wants to start her own business in her first grade picture. You know, she wanted to open an ice cream shop. I'm taking her to tutoring and the tutors tell me about SBA loans. You know, she's a little entrepreneur and I just want to support her efforts and everything that she does and just continue to be a positive uh, role model for her and for my daughter, my other daughter, Giovanna, and for my grandchildren as well. You talked about the ebb and flows of business and and sometimes you the money is high and sometimes it's a lean season. Talk about raising capital. How did you and your husband raise capital to start Allegiant Electric? We started our business with $5,000, basically. And, you know, in the service industry, you're able to get the cash flow coming in on a, on a regular basis, especially on the residential side of it. It does start to get more challenging as we pivoted our business to doing more commercial because a lot of times, you know, the, you're not just going to go finish, let's say, you know, installing the ceiling fan or changing out lights or doing, uh, it's, it's different. So now you're waiting, you know, at 30, at 45, we have one job, we haven't received payment on that one since November. And so then now we're able, you know, just based on the progress, now we're able to get to the next step where we can bill again. So that's great. And so it is challenging, you know, as a small business owner, we have one job that we completed and it was at UNLV and we completed it with the build it with one of the contractors here in Nevada. It was our first prevailing wage job and we still haven't received the retainage. So as a small business owner, it's really hard to carry that burden, you know, the payroll burden when you're waiting for payment from other contractors. What is something that you wish you knew before starting your business that you would like to impart to the audience? I wish I knew to hire an attorney because, you know, you start your business, you're just real passionate and you just really want to get your business going. I think just hiring an attorney to protect yourself, to make sure that you're developing all the proper documents correctly and hire a tax person right away, you know, you just get, I get very excited. And I started doing the QuickBooks myself, you know, initially, and my husband's going out and he's actually, you know, doing the work and, and you start taking on a lot of different roles. And, you know, we didn't have the resources, obviously, to hire anybody else. But I think an attorney is one important, a business attorney. And I'm glad I have a great one. His name's Brent Huntley. And he's still my attorney to this day. That's awesome. Talk about marriage and entrepreneurship. So owning your own business, being married, you know, my husband and I, we take turns on being the boss. You know, sometimes I'm just very passionate about something and I believe in something a certain way. And, you know, and sometimes you bring your work home and and, and just kind of figuring out the happy balance because while we're at work, we're both maybe on one level. Then we come home, we need to figure out, well, now we're married. It's, I mean, it's not that we're, we forget we're married, but you know, now we need to pay attention to what we're doing in our house. How are we helping each other? And, you know, my daughter, she's going to be a seventh grader now, which I'm going to cry, <laughs> but she uh, has homework every night. So we need to get her homework done. We need to make dinner and, and then start the routine back, you know, the next day again. So just balance. I think it's, you know, just making sure you have the happy balance within your marriage and and within your business as well. And we have to be supportive of one another. Talk about motherhood and entrepreneurship. Motherhood and entrepreneurship has, it has its challenges as well. I mean, especially during COVID. During COVID, my daughter, I believe she was in third grade. So I'm trying to run my business, you know, and she's on the computer. I'm trying to help her on the computer with what she needs to get done. That's challenging, you know, as well, trying to to do everything. While we were there, she actually drew, I wanna say about 137 pictures. She's a little artist. And so she started putting them all over the wall. Then she learned how to use the printer. So she started making copies of them. So she started selling them from one to $17 to my employees. And she started selling them to my mom. So I really think she's just a little entrepreneur. And I think it, it actually gave her the opportunity to, she's with us all the time. So her that's just how her mind goes. My older daughter, she's doing really well in real estate. 
and I had my real estate license since 1998. So there were times when she was little that I was taking her to properties and, you know, since she was really little. And so now she's just excelling. She's doing so good. And I'm so proud of her. Andrea, what is your zone of genius? I think I'm a student. I study, I study a lot of things. I just try to be as educated as possible with regards to, I think the solar industry, I was working with the neurosurgeon and I was just trying to wrap my brain around it and trying to understand how solar worked. I'm very analytical. Well, I worked at Lake Las Vegas. I did um, forensic accounting. Basically we were hired by Credit Suisse. It was a turnaround company. I worked uh, worked for at the time, it was Adelon Group. Basically, my job was to come in, they had borrowed about $574 million, they were defaulting on the loan. So I had to go in and, and I, you know, reviewed the gap analysis that they had provided to me. And I started having to look into their systems and find out, we ended up finding out they were running, they were doing things in two different systems. So it was my job to go in there and get all the software completely set up in Timberline with regards to their POS system. I got that all set up. It was a really great learning experience. I also wrote the reports that that they submitted to, because they ended up filing bankruptcy, to the bankruptcy um, court. It was just, uh, I learned a lot. I had some really great mentors. Jim was there, you know, at that time, he was my boss. Brad was there. I, Evan was there. I just had so many great people that were, were with me around that time. And just to learn from them and sit at the table with them. And, you know, they always elevated me and just really gave me the opportunity and pushed me to do things that I didn't want to do or I didn't think I could do. You know, one time we would bring realtors to to the Lake Club and just to see the property. And my boss, Jim Coyne, he, he was like, well, Andrea, I'm not going to be able to speak because he would do like a presentation for them. And I was like, okay, so, you know, what are we going to do? And he was like, well, you're going to do it. I was like, oh my gosh, I wasn't as comfortable as speaking in front of people, maybe as I am now. So that was just really a scary moment for me. But he pushed me and I did it. And I did good. And the next one next time, then I just started doing the presentation. So I just think when you have people that just believe in you and encourage you and push you further than than what you, you know, maybe believe in yourself, I just think that that's important to surround yourself with really good people that you know, that are going to take you to the next place. My mom always says, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. So I stay true to that. (laughs) That's beautiful. What problem exists in the world today that you would like to solve? I think one thing that I really struggle with, and I think all of us do, is skilled labor. When I was in sixth grade, I had a woodworking class that I took and I continued to take woodworking classes all the way through high school. And I I think, you know, they took a lot of different things away and out of the schools. I think right now we're dealing with the shortage of skilled labor. And so that's really why I really like Central Technical Training Academy. They have a program for girls and boys, for electrical, for plumbing. They do all sorts of stuff at that school. I think that school is amazing for young people. I also really like Crystal Ray St. Vitor. They have more like a business program for kids. And, you know, there's predominantly lower income uh, families that go to that school. And I think they're doing an amazing job. They do um, have sponsorship opportunities. So a lot of the girls are and boys are working in attorney's offices, Congressman Horsford's office as well. I think they're working with different casinos. I believe MGM is one of their sponsors also. I just think it's important that we give our kids the opportunity to to learn real life experiences and how do I build a resume? Um, how do I write a resume? And a lot of the soft skills, I think, for our young girls to know and understand, you know, like with the STEM program, my daughter at her school at Stream, because they also include religion. I think those programs are so, so important for our young kids and to just really keep educating them in different fields, whether it's construction or whether it's in the administrative side. I just think it's so important to just teach our kids at a young age. Advice you wish you had followed? I'm a really good student and of people like, and I think I, and as another one, I forgot to mention, she's also been a, a great mentor. I wish I had followed. I mean, I really, anything that anybody tells me, I really try to take it to heart and listen. 
I really think maybe, you know, with regards to Malcolm Miguel Galarza, you know, as I enter different industries, like now that we're, you know, really looking to do a lot of government contracting, I, I think I need to have different types of attorneys, maybe a business attorney to get my business established. Now I'm going to need an attorney that really knows and understands contract law and making sure that our contracts are correct in place. We know and understand some of the jobs that we're looking into. I really do think, and we had an office meeting yesterday and we brought in a project manager, Mark Rogi, and I really do believe he brought value to our organization because we really look at risk. I would take on every job. I mean, they want us to move a dinosaur. I'm like, we got it. We'll, we'll do it. And now we look at jobs and we determine what's the liability on this job. And do we even want to do it? We don't want to take on the risk. You know, we research the companies that we're going to work with because getting paid is important. And if we don't get paid in a timely manner, that's really impactful to my business and to my employees and to my own livelihood as well. What are you most proud of? What I'm most proud of is I was na- uh, had the opportunity to participate with the Women Economic Forum. So I was one of the women that actually got invited and received an award. I think my proudest moment was walking on that stage with my 11-year-old because women were not even allowed into the Harvard Club over 30 years um, 30 years ago. But I have the opportunity to not only walk into the club as a woman, but to walk on stage with my daughter was amazing. And also to see her playing, you know, with Terry Gutierrez, who is the CEO of Tesla in Mexico. I just really think like bridging our countries together and, you know, where we have two little girls from two different countries that are just playing together. I just really, I really think a lot of times we're just so divided and just, you know, what ways can we work together to to be more united? You know, even in our city, with different entities, you know, a lot of us work in different silos. And it's really hard to find out, find the resources that are out there for small businesses. And I just wish that there were better ways for, you know, the communication to come down so that, you know, it's not like, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that, you have to try to figure it out. And that's why I try to stay so connected with my small business community, because we really are, you know, a resource and a a net for each other to, to kind of share knowledge with each other. Talk to a younger Andrea. What advice would you give to a younger you? I would have started school sooner. I think, you know, when, once I graduated out of high school, I worked in, everybody worked for the city. I started right away, just like my mom worked for the city, you know, retired after 25 years. I wish I would have went to school right away and I wouldn't have started working so quick. My mom did push me to go to school and she said if I went to school, I didn't have to cook. So. I still keep that true to today and my husband cooks. <laughs> so I'll take every class. I, I'm a student. I love to learn and just to share the knowledge that I learned so that it's not so difficult for the next person to try, you know, that's wanting to start an electrical company or that's wanting to start a business. I've helped three of my friends start businesses and guide them. You know, one of my friends, one day he called and he's like, I quit my job. And I was like, oh, no. So, you know, we just basically helped him, guided him on, you know, what he needed to do. There was another gentleman who did the baseboards in in and around our house. And he was just like, Andrea, I just always see how excited you are and, you know, all the different things that you're doing. And he's like, I want to start my business. So, you know, we helped him and he's doing great. His dad, uh, him and his dad are, are actually doing their, their business now. They're great. They're doing amazing. They did my closets and they're just doing great. And I'm just so proud of them. And I'm excited that I was part of their journey. What have you not done in life that you dream about often that you would like to do? Well, I think I would like to go to Japan. I would always, one of my friends, my neighbor across the street, they're in Japan right now. And so I really, really want to go to Japan. That's something that's on my, my bucket list. If someone wrote a book about you, and we know some of the information is in the book that you co-authored, so we want you to say, what is something that they don't know about you that they should know about you? I'm an only child, and I, I'm i just really fine to be by myself. You know, I'm, I could be with a whole group of people, but I'm fine to just sit by myself. I like my quiet time, my me time. And I think that's important to myself. 
I think everybody should take time for themselves to take care of themselves because if you don't if you don't take care of yourself, how could you take care of the others around you, you know, including your family members? Talk about mental wellness and entrepreneurship. I think there needs to be more opportunities, you know, for small businesses because a lot of times when employees come to work, you know, you're you have different employees that are dealing with different things. I have one employee who's been with me, Gabe Castro. He's been with me for six years. And when he first came to work with me, you know, he was living with his mom and dad. He was sleeping on the couch. His dad ended up passing away. And at that time I was like, Gabe, I said, you should, I've had my real estate license. So I helped him get his property on the market. And then I got him in touch with the mortgage person. He got a mortgage and bought a house. And now he's actually um, taking care of his mom. She's about 85 and his disabled brother. So having the ability to create a home for his family. I mean, some of the struggles I think with regards to mental health also is he had, he struggles with, he has a disabled brother. You know, he, his 85 year old mother is lifting him up, taking him the resources in our, in our state are not quite there for him to, you know, and he can't afford to be able to hire a full-time person to take care of them. So I think just being understanding and available, oftentimes I feel like I have 18 boys and even I don't have any boys because, you know, men are, are very needy, what I what we've learned, our Sally and I, and just guiding them and just kind of, you know, just basic things. I've helped seven of my employees get qualified to buy houses. And I think that's important to me. And I want to continue to to help my employees, to empower them so that they can elevate, you know, to the next level, you know, within their homes and, and for their kids as well. I think it's just really important. What, if anything, keeps you up at night? Uh, payroll, getting paid from my the contractors when they're paying slow, and just having the the cash flow and the capital to you know to keep my business going. I mean, I could get a check and then I pay all my vendors, you know, and then the cycle again is just having the cash flow. I think that's just what does keep me up at night. What brings you joy? My daughters and my grandkids. Just seeing the pictures. Luke started school just this this last week. So, you know, my daughter will send me pictures. He's so excited. And, you know, just kind of hearing this, her stories, seeing my daughter, my little one, you know, she just, you know, all her little entrepreneur spirit. We have a yard sale. She's out there selling ice cream. She's selling lemonade. I'm just seeing her grow. And I wish now she's, you know, my mom's like, I'm going to cry. I'd always buy her toys. Now she's wanting makeup. I was like, oh, and, you know, middle school is hard, too, with little girls. And, you know, sometimes people could be the little kids could be mean to each other. And and I just, you know, try to just try to remind her that, you know, to keep her confidence. And she's in gymnastics and she plays golf and and, you know, encouraging her because, you know, the kids are telling her, well, mama, there's not a lot of girls that are in golf. And I said, that's fine. There's not a lot of girls that are in construction. So you're fine. You're good. You're going to keep going to your practice and you got this. Don't worry about it. So I just think continuing to encourage her, that's important to me. And what inspires you to keep going? My husband, my family. I just, you know, I enjoy owning my own business. I enjoy the flexibility. You know, sometimes we could be working late at night, but then there's days if I need to go on vacation, I could work remotely. We went to Bora Bora and I want to go back that the people were so kind and so nice that I was able to work remotely. So, you know, that all that, I, I love owning my own business. Let's take a snapshot of the last 30 days. What was your biggest win? I think the biggest win was actually doing the installation of the EV chargers at the Allegiant Stadium. I think that was huge as a small business owner to have that opportunity. I can't tell you how excited I am about it. We had a video completed by Storyville and the video came out amazing. You know, my employee, he's in there and just listening to him say why he liked working for Allegiant Electric was empowering to me because he said, you know, I'm not just a number on the board. I'm part of the family. We're part of the family. Families, it, it, we all have our ups and downs in life and we're, we're each other's strength. And I just, that made me proud. And, you know, now his son's going to come and, and work with us as well. So I'm very excited for that also. And what is the vision for the next year, the next five years for Allegiant Electric? 
Well, I would like to continue scaling my business. I do participate in a lot of different programs. I'm very excited that the National Hispanic Construction Alliance is uh, launching a chapter here in Nevada. And they're in California. They've launched in Phoenix. I'm part of the board. I think this is going to be a, bring a lot of opportunities for Latinas and Latinas. And, not, and I don't believe that it's just going to be for Latinas and Latinas because I believe it's going to cross over because there's such a need in the small business community. And it's really hard to really, how do you get in touch with a lot of the Hispanics, you know, when it, with regards to communicating with them, you know, a lot of my employees, you know, that are Hispanic and not just Hispanic, but they don't even know how to use, like they could answer the phone and, and call out, but we have an app for their scheduling. So just trying to teach them those types of skills, it's missing right now. And even, you know, I think in resume writing, you know, I and I helped my husband's godson write a resume. And I just really think that those skills are missing in our school system right now. And it's it's important. And I'm going to step back for a moment. And you talked about your win. Congratulations, installing the EV chargers at Allegiant Stadium. How do you celebrate your wins? My husband and I will go to dinner. I think we're just our team, we're proud of our team and, you know, the work that they're doing. It just depends, you know, if I, um, if cash flow is good, maybe we'll go out of town to California to go. We like to go to Knott's Berry Farm. You know, we like to vacation. So I think that's going to be a lot of, that's important for me as well. Andrea, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. I guess, you know, I'm trying to think you've done a really great job. Thank you. (laughs) I think how do you navigate Nevada as a small business owner? I think that's something, you know, that I've really struggled with and just learning and understanding the resources that are available. You know, how do you do that? And, and that's why I try to share my knowledge with everybody so that it's not so difficult for people to, to navigate Nevada as a small business owner. And to continue to empower each other, I think we need to share information and we need to continue to stay united as a whole, you know, regardless of race, color, religion, or, you know, anything like that. I think that's important. Let's talk about legacy. When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? That I'm I'm giving. I'm a very giving person. I'm very dedicated to my community. I believe community involvement is very, very important. We've been part of the Las Vegas uh, Metropolitan Police Department toy drive for over nine years. And I just really were very involved in my daughter's school. She goes to St. Francis de Sales. We've done a lot of work at her school and in the church. We stay engaged with with the father there. We do do a lot. We've done work for I Care for Kids. You know, we did some in kind work there. I just think that, you know, being part of the community, volunteering, I've served on the Lutheran Social Services Board. They're doing an amazing job, you know, for people in our community. And I just really think that community involvement is very, very important to all of us. We've come to the part of our interview. It's called Rapid Round of Fun. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I'd like you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready for the Rapid Round of Fun? Yes. The last movie you saw? Matilda with my daughter. What is your favorite comfort food? New Mexican food. You relax doing what? Spending time with my family in my backyard in our pool. Your favorite singer or rapper? I like Eminem and I do like, I like Rihanna as well. Your favorite dance song? I think like 80s and 90s music. What food you eat every week, no matter what? Something to do with chili. We put chili in everything that we do. I'm from New Mexico. (laughs) Your ideal car? I don't normally drive because my husband drives. I think he wants, he really wants one of those Mercedes vehicles like the one that's on the Kardashians. Work out or hit the couch? It depends on, you know, what we have going on. I do have a, I have a gym membership that I pay for. (laughs) We go from time to time. I should get there more. I haven't. And I don't normally watch a lot of TV other than in the morning. I really try to stay engaged with what's going on. You know, I, I pay attention to to politics, because I think it's important, you know, people vote, and we stay engaged with our leaders in our state. 
Andrea Vigil, thank you so much for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you, to do business with you. Feel free to leave all your social media handles and let them know how they can purchase the book. Okay, the easiest way to get a hold of me would be to just call myself 702-715-2510. If you need electrical services, you could call Allegiant Electric at 702-333-0152. And that'll get you to our back office line to schedule an appointment or if you need a free estimate. We are on very active in social media. I'm on LinkedIn, our businesses, and I'm personally on LinkedIn. Please reach out to me and connect. I'm also, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, and we have a a Twitter account. And I do have a marketing person that helps me with that. If you're interested in buying my book and, you know, to support these young girls so that we could get them onto this Enterprising Women magazine event, you could just give me a call 702-715-2510 and be a part of this amazing opportunity that we're going to put forward for these girls. Thank you, Andrea. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday. And remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.